What we have now is the six weapons of influence. Uh, please don't go away wielding weapons. Like I said, these, the, the, this isn't my choice of phrase. Uh, if you want more information on this as we go through it, by the way, guys, uh, Robert Cialdini is the author, Six Weapons of Influence. Uh, find lots of information uh, over there from Robin. So, Robert, there are six weapons. Uh, a couple of them we've touched on, a couple of them we haven't looked at. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple now. We're going to get to four o'clock, we're going to have our final break, and then we'll come back and finish this, and then just finish off with a little bit of relationship skills. Uh, let, sorry, relationship building scale uh, before, we, uh, before we finish today's session, okay? So we have liking, we have reciprocity, that's a word that not a lot of people use very often. Reciprocity means, rep it means re uh, reciprocity. You do this for me, I'll do that for you. Uh, authority, we'll talk about when that's useful and when it isn't. Social proof, it's quite an interesting concept that uh, our modern world seems to be thriving on <laughs> at the moment. Uh, scarcity and consistency of approach, okay? So those are the six weapons, let's take a look at each uh, one. Number one, liking, okay? I'm gonna come back to this triangle for the last module of the day when we come back after the break. So don't worry about this too much at the moment, but what it really means is, you, when you build a relationship with somebody, you move them through a scale, okay? If people like you, you move through the scale quicker, okay? So, people generally like other people to be simple and straightforward. Okay, now, yes, it will depend on your personality profile a little bit, this, but when people try to overcomplicate things, when people try to build things up, you know, it's easier for people to see through them. People like simple and straightforward, okay? And I know life sometimes isn't simple and straightforward. It can be very complex, I understand that. But if we can break it down, I think Einstein said... Einstein said, if I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on it, I'd spent the first 55 minutes divining, divining the right question to ask. And then I'll be able to answer it. Yeah? And what he was getting at with that quote was, it takes it, he also said it takes a genius to keep things simple, anybody can make things complicated. Um, he, a he actually, that, that wasn't really the true saying. The true saying was it takes a, ge a genius to keep things simple, any idiot can make things complicated. That's actually what he said. Uh, but I was trying to make it a bit nicer, yeah? It does take, sometimes it's hard to keep things simple and straightforward. But if we do, we're able to influence and more people are likely to start building a relationship with you, okay? Number two. Reciprocity, okay? Um, reciprocity uh, is another, another uh, way of saying it. Um, you do this for me and I will do that for you, okay? It makes the world go round. Uh, it, it creates trade, uh, which, the, which the world is obviously based on. Um, you come to work and catapult pay you. That's always all right, isn't it? It's a bit of reciprocity, isn't it, going on, yeah? As long as they pay you on time. That's, that's it's important, that, isn't it? Yeah? So, but however, there may be some other stuff that is also reciprocity. So, your job maybe gives you a sense of satisfaction. Your job maybe gives you a social environment. Your job maybe helps you build self-esteem. Yeah? And actually, all of these things I mentioned earlier on investing in human resources and this is why companies do this companies that, that believe me there's never been a company or a business anywhere that said I tell you what let's pay people the going rate let's give them bonuses let's let's give them a, a, a career let's give them um, development let's give them the, uh, and we'll do all of that just out the goodness of our art not really what they do is they go we'll give you all of that 
and then you come to work and work really hard and grow the business. Reciprocity, yeah? Reciprocity, yeah? And if, if, if we can make you feel great while you're here, remember, for this great big piece of work, yeah, this, this, this lifespan of work, if we can make you feel great, we're gonna get more from you. Reciprocity, that's exactly what it is, okay? You know, and it's like, um, you know, uh, when, when we use it with children, it's called bribery, isn't it? It's called bribery, isn't it? You know, you know when you're in the shop and they're playing up and you're like, well, I'll take you to the sweet shop after if you just go, okay, 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 okay. That's re bribery, yeah? Uh, that's what reciprocity is, yeah? You do this for me, I'll do that for you. However, keep it legal. That's all I'm gonna say, okay? So, you do this for me, I'll do that for you. Uh, I'll return the, uh, the favour in kind. That could be um, time, energy, resource, whatever it may be, yeah? And there's reciprocity. So, before I move on to authority, uh, we've nearly up to the hour again. So, let's go on a final break. When we come back after, we've got four more of these to get through and then we're gonna finish off with a little bit of relationship uh, building scale uh, before we move on, okay? So it's, um, uh, I'm gonna get, you've got 14 minutes this time, not 15. Okay, so uh, if you can be back at 10 past four, please, that'd be great. When we say authority in a business, the automatic uh, uh, assumption is line authority. Uh, and that, it, that, that will be the case if, uh, if you are uh, in a certain senior position, it will give you certain line authority uh, to be able to influence uh, people in, in a certain way. But not all authority comes from level uh, of uh, job title or status or, or, or whatever it may be. So it, it could be the status and the job role that gives you authority. Um, it could be length of service. Now this one we just have to be a little bit careful with. Um, so often when people have been in a business long time, they carry with them a level of authority. They've been around the block, they know the stuff, all this type of stuff. Um, that can work in a great way, but it can also work in not such a great way. So in um, <clears throat> diversity and inclusion, this is sometimes called the halo or the horns effect, when somebody's been in a business a long time. If somebody's been in a business a long time and they've been a player for that time, Okay, so they fit into that player box that we talked about, yeah? If they've been in a business for a long time and they, they've, they've come in, they've worked hard every day and so on and so on, the weight of authority they carry, carry is very useful because they're very well known, they're very well liked, they're very well uh, um, uh, respected uh, and trusted. Uh, so they carry authority because of that longevity. And that's great, that's, a, that's the best way of using uh, it rather than line authority in all honesty. However, Sometimes, that, that would be the, what we call a halo effect. Sometimes you are, might have something also called the horns effect. And what that is, is somebody that's been there for a long time, uh, but hasn't particularly been very happy for that whole time that they've been there, probably fit into the corpse box uh, in our little model, and it, it creates a horns effect, but they still carry weight of authority just simply because of the longevity uh, that they've been in. All right, so again, just watch out for that one because the authority can be a good influencer or a not so good influencer, the longevity, okay? Um, people can have authority because of their technical IQ. So te technically somebody uh, might have more authority, um, uh, uh, sorry, they might have more authority because technically they know more information, they have more knowledge, so it might carry a weight of authority. Uh, with them, okay? Uh, or they could just be a loud extrovert uh, that likes to take command of the room when they walk in uh, as well. So you have a little bit of that going on uh, as well. So when it comes to authority, guys, just remember as an influencing tool, not doesn't necessarily mean line authority. It could be length of service. It could be the halo or the horns effect. It could be technical knowledge and it could be an extroverse type profile. Uh, that likes to um, to take the authority, if that makes sense. Okay, number four, social proof. Now this one is becoming absolutely massive in our culture. It's always been around, um, but this one's um, exponentially growing. 
Okay, so um, what's the first thing you do if you want to go to a restaurant you've never been there before? You look for the restaurant online, you find the restaurant, and then you tra you check Trustpilot <laughs> uh, and their reviews. Okay, and what that what you're doing is you're trying to get some social proof that that restaurant is good or bad. Okay. And this is becoming more and more and more and more now. This is what common sense is, the argument of common sense is based on. If you're ever having a conversation or an argument with somebody and they've done something and you go, why, why have you done it that way? Surely it's common sense to do it this way. What you're trying to say at that point is you say it's common sense because the rest of the world do it that way and that's the why you should do it that way. You're trying to use social and a social proof argument when you're trying to influence that person. The only problem with common sense is it's not that common. Okay? And sometimes it doesn't even make sense. So just be careful. Common sense is normally common to your profile, to your thinking, to your background, to your upbringing. It's not common, common, common across the board of everybody. So that's why the common sense argument doesn't work very well. But the social proof argument, if you can get it right, does work very well. Let me give you an example of this. Quite, it's quite a recent modern example. Um, you've probably even seen them around actually. Um, it was, it was, was it? No, it was, dur was it pre-COVID, during COVID? No, it's pre-COVID, pre-COVID. Um, so there was a, 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 a couple that gave up their jobs and they set up, uh, they wanted to bake, uh, you know, macaroons, you know, those little like, they're in between, the, I never know whether a macaroon's a cake or a biscuit, but you know you know where I'm going, yeah? So they make these little macaroons, uh, and they had 10,000 pounds in savings, that's all they had. So they spent 3,000 pounds on equipment to do it, and then they spent 7,000 pounds, the rest of the money. You might think now that what did they spend it on? They spent it on marketing, on, on advertising, and all this type of stuff. What they did, is they spent £7,000 making £7,000 worth of macaroons and then they sent them to high profile Instagrammers. Okay? So what we call them, does anybody know what those high pro profile Instagrammers are called these days? The name of them. There you go. I can see you mouthing it there, yeah. Influencers, yeah? We, they're actually, that's their job. Their job is an influencer. I'm telling you, I'm in the wrong business, right? Their job is an influencer, right? And what happened was these macaroons went to these, you know, these people that have four, five, six million followers, okay? All it took was for a couple of those Instagrammers to put some pictures on of those macaroons and look at these, they're great, da 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 da. And they were turning over a million pounds within three months. Okay, so that is using social proof to influence people. Okay, it's one of the best example, recent examples that as soon as I read it, I thought, wow, that is a great example. Yeah, so this is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger now. We used to call it word of mouth. Yeah, we used to go, you know, in the, you know, that like dare I say in the old days, you'd do a good job, somebody tell somebody else you've done a good job, they'd come and see you again, and so on and so on and so on. But this is becoming massive now with virtual Instagram and everything else that's going on. Okay, so people do it because they think everybody else does it. So people went and bought those macaroons because influence told the influencers told them to go and buy the macaroons because other people are doing it. Yeah, and then of course all it takes is for two or three other people to put the macaroons on the pictures, and all of a sudden it's a snowball effect on the back of it. Okay. Um, it will work on customers if you can influence your customers in that way. In your case, your collaborators, yeah, or the people that you uh, agree the service agreements that you have with them, and so on and so on and so on. Why should they use you? Why should they use Catapult? Well, you should use it because these users and these users and these, these users, don't they? I've even got it on my website. If you look on my website, who do we work with? Whirlpool, Centrica, Vodafone, Catapult. D it's there to go, Luke, work with us because all of these people do. Yeah, social proof. Experts are quite useful. 
you should do this because the experts tell you. Yeah, the experts become the social proof. I'm a little bit dubious about the word expert. Okay, takes about 10,000 hours of practice of one particular thing to become an expert, expert in it. That's the definition. Uh, that's not 10,000 hours at your job. That's 10,000 hours at one particular thing, which normally takes 20, 30, 40 years uh, to do. Um, but if you, if you perceive somebody as an expert, yeah, then you can use that as a social proof. Okay, we should do this. So let's face it, guys. That's what the government's been telling us for two years, isn't it? You know, that's what Sir, uh, Sir Chris Whitty and Sir, to, to, to Patrick Valance, that that's why Boris brought them in. Social proof. This is what the medical um, 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 uh, um, um, area is thinking. Uh, this is what the medical the division, this is what everybody's telling us. Everybody should go and get it done because this is what everybody says. Yeah? The social proof. Okay? Uh, friends, you can use these, but they're not as reliable for social proof. <laughs> you should do this because my mate did. You know what I mean? I had a friend that did. You know, not as convincing, but again, it's there. Yeah. Reviews I've already mentioned. Okay. Trust pilot. Yeah. Testimonials. It's all social proof. Okay. It's all social proof. Yeah. And I've, I've put social media in there because that's really now where you're getting the social proof. Yeah, I mean, let's face it guys. I don't know about you, maybe it's just me, but if I see something on Facebook and, and I'm, I'm in two minds about it, the first thing I do is see how, many, see how many likes it's got. Straight away, social proof starts to kick in at that point, yeah? And of course, if you've got any certifications, so if you've got any certifications for, your, uh, for yourself, uh, for, um, uh, for your business, uh, whatever, that also shows, it shows, it shows social proof. Um, so, you know, occasionally, very occasionally, I get asked what my academic qualifications are. I think I've only been asked twice in 15 years of me doing this job, in all honesty. Uh, and both people were teachers uh, that asked me uh, what they were. Um, you know, I've got a master's degree in solution-focused thinking, leadership, and coaching. Um, does it? Do, do I use it? Do I advertise it? No, but when I need it, it gives some social proof um, that I might know what I'm talking about. I don't know. You can you can decide that for yourself at the end of the course. Uh, but that's kind of the thing that we were talking about. Number four was social proof. Okay. Number five, scarcity. Scarcity. When you make something scarce, people want it more. Okay? What happened in this country just before Christmas in regards to fuel? There was felt a little bit of a fuel shortage. The news went, there's a fuel shortage. And everybody went, I need fuel. Yeah? Ran out and got a load of fuel. And everybody ran out of fuel at that point. Yeah? So when you make something scarce, it generally becomes more in demand. It's like if you phone a builder tomorrow because you want an extension building and you ring them up and you go, I want an extension building, and they go, oh, they go, great, I can start this afternoon. Okay, why are you not busy? Well, well that's a little bit worrying, isn't it? You can start this afternoon, yeah? Now, you won't want to wait for seven months but you might find the fact that he's busy for the next couple of months gives you the scarcity of his availability increases increases the value of what he does and how he does it. Okay, so that's quite important. Um, I use quite I use this a lot with time. Okay, so I think time is the most precious commodity you've got. I think it's I think it's worth more than paying customers. Okay, so when people try to steal your time, yeah, they're stealing money from you. So I used to be out on the road four days a week, I'd come in on a Friday, and because I've been out the office four days a week, the moment I walked into the office, I would get attacked by everybody in the office because they would need stuff. You might feel my pain, some of you might get the same, yeah? And they were coming in, and I was getting to the end of Friday, Done doing no of my own, none of my own work and 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 everybody else's work. 
yeah? So what I did, as I thought, you know what, I need to add some value into my time. I need to make it a little bit more scarce. Not too scarce so they can't access it, but actually they're not valuing my time. So what I started doing is I came in and they come in and go, I need you for this, I need you for this, I need you for this. And I'd go, no problem, is it health and safety or customer critical? And if they go, what, what, what do you mean? They said, will the building burn down or will a customer not get what they need if we do this right now? Uh, no, 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 it's not that important. Okay, great, two o'clock then. You can see me at two o'clock. Oh, can't we do it now? No, because I've got other stuff that I need to be doing. So if it's not business critical or health and safety critical, I'll, do it, I'll see you at two o'clock. After a few weeks of me doing that, I'd come in on a Friday, and instead of my guy going, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you, they'd go, tell me when I can have five minutes with you today, John, and I'll be ready. Now they're valuing the time, because I made it a little bit more scarce than they could just have it when I walked through the door, okay? Now, I'd never make it that scarce that they couldn't access it. That, would, that wouldn't work very well. So that's what scarcity is. When you make something scarce, demand generally increases. And think about this, when you're trying to influence somebody, you want them, you want that demand, yeah? So, simple supply, uh, supply and demand. Scarcity can add value. It works well with time, as I've just said. Uh, I'll give you the builder example uh, already, okay? So the final weapon, the final weapon is consistency. Okay, if you want to influence somebody, if you are consistent in your behavior, it allows them to build trust in your relationship and it's e you can influence them more easily. All right? So consistent behavior is what people want. I hope you don't work with anybody like this and if you do, don't shout their name out. But if you come to work and some, one of your colleagues one day is happy, next day is miserable, well, next day they're happy, next day is miserable, then they're miserable, then they're happy, that's hard work. Okay? Really hard work. And it's difficult to build a relationship with that person because of that unpredictability. I used to work in a consultancy where the FD was the MD's wife, okay? And I used to come in in the morning, and the, not just me, the rest of us used to come in, look, we didn't even go in the door. We'd look through the door and just try and see how she was looking to see what type of day it was gonna be, yeah? Uh, I'd look in there and go, oh, I'm not talking to her about my expenses today. You know what I mean, yeah? So having consistent behavior is really important in relationship building and then for influencing, okay? If consistent, trust follows. Consistent behavior is followed with trust, okay? Inconsistent will show you a lack of trust.